Comments on anything that's not on the agenda? Is there anything anybody has? Any additions, corrections to the agenda? Okay. Review procedures for Kazaji Joseph. I will now describe the rules that govern these proceedings. First, staff will give a report. The staff report will describe the criteria that an applicant must satisfy to receive approval. The board may ask questions of staff. Then the chair will open the hearing to the public. The applicant will be allowed to speak first and may ask for rebuttal time. After the applicant presents, any person may address the planning commission. Any testimony, argument, or evidence you give must relate to the criteria listed in the staff report or Curry County Zoning Ordinance, or Curry County Comprehensive Plan, or state or federal constitutions, statutes, rules, regulations, or planning goals that apply to the application. Before the hearing is closed, any participant may ask for an opportunity to present additional evidence, argument, or testimony regarding an application. If you ask for more time, the commission will either continue the public hearing to a date certain, or close the hearing and leave the record open for additional written evidence, argument, or testimony. If the hearing is continued, persons may present and rebut new evidence, arguments, or testimony. If new written evidence is submitted at the continued hearing, any person may request, prior to the conclusion of the continued hearing, that the record be left open for at least 14 days to submit additional written evidence, arguments, or testimony for the purpose of responding to the new written evidence. If the hearing is closed but the commission leaves the record open for additional written evidence, arguments, or testimony, the record shall be open, left open for at least 14 days. Any participant may file a written request with the Planning Commission for an opportunity to respond to new evidence submitted during the period the record was left open. Unless waived by the applicant, the applicant shall have at least seven days after the record is closed to all other parties to submit final written arguments in support of the application. The applicant's final submittal shall be considered part of the record but shall not include any new evidence. Failure to raise an issue with specificity before the close of the record so the Commission and any party can respond will prevent you from raising that issue on appeal. Failure to raise a constitutional issue with specificity will prevent you from bringing a court action for damages. That's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, now it's an opportunity for commissioners to identify any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflict of interest in the, in the matters that we're going to hear tonight in the hearing process. Do you have any ex parte? No. Okay. Only, I still have the one with uh, Adam's issue, the ex parte there, so. Um, now we'll move on to the agenda. Approval of August 15, 2019 minutes. Was there any corrections or additions to that? I have two. And at the bottom of the first page, the last sentence. Does Chair Freeman ask whether there a fence would be required around the rain garden? I think there should be. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Similar one. How about there would be? <laughs> if there. I guess it's out of context. Yeah. Yeah. The other one was um, the second paragraph on the second page. Questions were asked by Chair Freeman. 
asked him. The third page or second page? Um, second page. She just moved up. Oh, okay. About the middle of the page. Okay. Um, questions were asked by Chair Freeman, asked about the size of the units. I think asked should be removed. So it would read, questions were asked by Chair Freeman about the size of the units. That was page three. Page three? First. You're printing out the little Oh, I've got him stapled in the wrong order. I'm sorry. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> Did you get I just uh, want to say that Nancy has been doing these minute, minute summaries and she has really done an awesome job. I've been she impressed has. when I read this and I'm like, wow, I didn't even remember that part. Sure, so, and what I liked about it is those were just typographical errors oh, yeah. and you're not saying there's any issues with the substance of the minutes. You sure wasn't a verbal issue with Chair Freeman? <laughs> those were verbatim quotes, yes. I was also an English teacher in a previous is there anything else? The, the only other thing, if possible, um, first of all, one, yes, I think it's a fabulous job. On that. We have page numbers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll uh, make a motion. Motion over. Second. The second, all favor say aye. 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 Next item is is for the final order on AD 1907 <coughs> denial of Adam's conditional use for pistol river gravel extraction. And after that, I'll turn over to Vice Chair St. Marie. Do we need to discuss this at all, or just, just make a motion I can, to sign it? I can introduce and give a, a brief summary of what the application was. Okay. Uh, this was in the matter of AD 1907, a request for a conditional use approval for land-based mining and processing of aggregate along the Pistol River in the forest regrazing zone. Uh, the application was made by Mr. Ron Adams. Uh, there was a Planning Commission decision on this on August 15th, 2019, at your last meeting. Um, that decision was to deny the application. Uh, the decision was based primarily on the applicant hadn't submitted enough site-specific information about the proposed gravel extraction operation to adequately address the criteria in the Curry County Zoning Ordinance and specifically we could not meet the criteria in the code related to those environmental issues that were brought up. Uh, so with that, that's just uh, it in a nutshell and um, you, I believe you should have the final order in front of you that you've read um, and if so, you're ready to make a decision on it. Do we just need a motion to go ahead? Yes. Okay. By motion, we approve the final order. I second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And uh, with that, I do have the final order for you and myself to sign that we'll send out. Okay. 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 Next item is to is a discussion on AD 1909 Keywood Foster Rock Quarry withdrawal of application. Okay, this I just wanted to uh, briefly give an update on what happened. Um, this is again on AD 1909, a proposal to develop a quarry rock site to produce jetty stone for the Corps of Engineers project at the mouth of the Columbia River. Uh, this is a site that's located about four miles east of Highway 101 near Edson Creek off the Sixes River Road. Um, what happened is the applicant withdrew the application by email on September 5th, 2019, um, copied the property owner, but I did request the property owner actually send me an email uh, concurring with redrawing, uh, withdrawing the application. 
They did on September 15, 2019. The owner also submitted uh, an email stating they wanted to withdraw their application. Um, I did send out a letter that you should have a copy of from the planning department. Uh, that letter was sent to adjacent property owners within 500 feet of the proposal who were originally notified. It was also put on the Planning Commission website for those that uh, knew to look there to find out what was going on with that. Um, the reason for the withdrawal is that Kiwit had a proposal into the Corps of Engineers to produce this jetty rock for, like I said, uh, on the Columbia River, and they were not the su successful bidder on that project, so they had no reason to proceed with the project. <coughs> so, I guess, is there anything then we need to do? Nope, nope, it's just an update, and they did want to thank the commission and uh, staff and everybody for helping them through the process to date. I think for the minutes, if the commission just acknowledges the withdrawal in some way on the record, then because it, at one point we had it up for a decision, and so, um, for instance, you all are performing in your quasi-judicial, a court, if, if the parties were to do something, the court would say, okay, case closed somehow. So if you just want to uh, move to acknowledge the withdrawal, I think that would be appropriate. That's fair. I move to acknowledge the withdrawal of the Foster Thank you. Second. Move to second. A roll call vote, please. Uh, Chair Freeman? Yes. Vice Chair St. Marie? Yes. Commissioner Duval? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Okay, final order on S1901 approval Pacific Ave Road Reef subdivision. Okay, this, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were dead. If you were to take it away. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yes, this is the application that you heard, and we had a public hearing for this at your last meeting on August 15th. It's a uh, subdivision 1901, which is a preliminary plat and plan. It's to authorize a 33-lot subdivision on 7.64 acres in the commercial one zone, which is a light industrial zone. It was filed by Joshua Richards of St. Pacific uh, Incorporated. Um, this, just for people's knowledge, is located in the Wedderburn area just north of Gold Beach. Uh, it's inside the urban growth boundary of the city of Gold Beach. At your last meeting, you uh, voted to approve the preliminary plat and plan, and that is what's in the order before you. It has 32 conditions. Those conditions are made a part of the order in front of you. Um, and that's pretty much it, unless you have some questions. Is it ready? I, I have a, one question. I never, sure. I'm not real clear on this. Protective fencing on that, uh, Rain Garden uh, B, mm -hmm. and it's just protective fencing for what? The protective fencing was a staff recommendation because that Rain Garden area was going to have multi-use. It was also going to function as a potential play area for children, and that's a busy street that's right adjacent to the Rain Garden play area for children. So I suggested that you put some fencing up. Um, they're looking at how to provide fencing and at the same time not block um, people's visions uh, as far as making that turn into that area. So that's still a little bit up in the air, but we'll see it on the final plat when they come through. Then uh, Rain Garden A is of less impact when it's down one of the streets in the street. It, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, Rain Garden, I think it's A. Yeah, yeah, that one. It, it's, the, it's different, it doesn't have any fencing, so it's because of the location. It's, it, exactly, it's not, in, it's not in a location that <coughs> would be um, near traffic. Okay. That was my question. Anybody, anything else? Um, then I'll entertain a motion. I believe so, me. Second. Move to second and roll call vote, please. Uh, Chair Freeman? Yes. Uh, 
Vice Chair of St. Marie? Yes. Commissioner DeWald? Yes. yes. Commissioner Jensen? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. So I would just like to update the commission a little bit about uh, where uh, St. Pacifica is with their work. Uh, they did come in and ask if they could uh, initiate development on that site. Um, what I suggested is that they are allowed one house outright in the commercial one zone on that seven acre parcel. So we authorized them for planning clearance and they submitted their plans for a building permit to go ahead and build that first house. And um, I was pretty excited about that just to let you know because it's a different type of construction material that they're going to use which has not been used before in Curry County that anybody is aware of. So to see the first house go up and be able to go and look at it is kind of uh, a good thing for everybody, including them. So just an update. Thank you. On, in the, on the, would they like these back? I, I don't know. I have, I, I have really. Yeah. I'd like to one. donate mine. Yeah, you. I mean, I can give them back. I to them, them. Of course, we could use a bunch of them. It's not double sided. We can use the back button. If you want to give them back, yes, we certainly will. We'll make okay. sure they get them. Okay, there's a move along. Uh, public hearing is 1911. Silver Cypress Vintage RV Park. Would you like updates? Okay, this is a new application. Uh, this uh, follows the rules that I talked about earlier as far as the rules for quasi-judicial decision-making. I will start with the staff report. And then the commission may want to invite testimony or input from the applicant and then for the pu from the public. Okay, this is uh, application AD 1911. It's a request for conditional use approval for a proposed vintage recreation vehicle park called Silver Cypress. So Silver Cypress is proposed to have 11 upgraded vintage Silver Stream units catering to couples, yoga retreats, and artists with a, within a tranquil landscape natural environment. And the project includes two parcels with a total of three acres in the rural commercial zoning district. And with that, I'm going to hop over here. And talk a little bit more about the project. So you guys don't need my email. I've been reading your email. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's real exciting, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot like mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Silver Cypress Vintage Stream RV Park. Uh, I have to say this red Airstream is probably my favorite. Um, it would be fun to go down the road and actually see somebody pulling something like that. Um, okay, so the location is 32990-32982 Nasika Road. It's in the community of Nasika Beach. Uh, so the background information, the owners are Garth Eby and Jevin Showers, and they're both here tonight. Uh, it's zoned, as I mentioned, rural commercial. There's two lots put together, making 3.01 acres. Um, the existing development on the property is there's an old residence and an old commercial building that used to be a former restaurant. Um, the minor improvements on the property include a couple of airstreams that are on the site getting ready to be uh, put into to use if this is approved. Um, uh, there's some fencing that's taken place. There has been an enormous amount of work in removing uh, vegetation that just grew up on the site because nobody was uh, taking care of it. Uh, public water sources, the Seca Beach Water, uh, they have on-site sewers. And this gives you a little indication of the existing site conditions. This is taken from the Sika Road, looking into the parcel. You can see the owner of the parcel brings his big RV in and stays there while he cleans up the place and does work. But this is generally what that looks like from the road. <coughs> Proposed development, 11 units on 3.01 acres. Uh, the existing old house is going to be converted into a manager's unit. 
the old commercial building, which was a restaurant, is going to be converted into a gathering area for park guests. Prior land use approvals. Some of you might remember there was a similar proposal to this uh, last year. Uh, there was an administrative conditional use that was approved by the planning director in, uh, well, last year, 19, 2018. Uh, that was, a decision was appealed to the planning commission. The planning commission held a hearing or started to hold a hearing on December 20th, right before Christmas last year, but there was no quorum for the hearing, so that nothing happened. Uh, after that, the applicant decided to withdraw their application. They withdrew it in January, and we gave notification to everybody that they had withdrawn their application. Uh, one of the issues that came up during a lot of the discussion um, and with staff afterwards was the need to do a geotechnical study for this area to move forward with the, the next, next project. Key issues with this project, um, the, probably the primary issue of concern that has to be addressed in the context of this application is the coastal erosion. Uh, Nasika Beach, the bluff there, has a history of eroding and over the past few years it has uh, gotten significantly worse. Uh, so the geologic hazard analysis has uh, evaluated that situation and made recommendations for this application uh, for it to proceed forward if the Planning Commission approves it. Uh, there are wetlands noted on the site um, by the National Wetlands Inventory. There's a requirement in the county code that we notify a Division of State Lands. Uh, however, there is no construction proposed in that wetland. Uh, the question is, is it really there? The National Wetland Inventory sometimes is a little bit elusive on the reality of a wetland. Uh, but we did do the notification. This is in the rural commercial zone. Okay, so this is an area when Curry County was going through the comprehensive plan approval with LCDC and DLCD. This was an area that had been already developed. So DLCD allowed this area to continue for commercial and residential uses based on existing uses. And they, thought, they turned it an exception area in that it wasn't resource land. It wasn't being used for farm and forest, forestry at that time. So an RV park is allowed through a conditional use process within this community of Nisika Beach. Stormwater and surface water is another significant issue to look at tonight. Uh, there, there are mitigation components that are required for the geotechnical report. The aim of those requirements are to get water, surface water, away from the bluff so it can uh, hopefully negate some of the substantial uh, erosion on that bluff. And here we are to the eroding cliff. Um, the geotechnical report made a recommendation that there should not be any development within 125 feet of the eroding cliff, um, and that is uh, a condition of this application. There are also issues with lighting and vegetative buffers. There are recommendations in the conditions of this application to increase some of the vegetative buffers. The lighting is proposed at low illumination lighting. It's not four inches, it's four feet. Four feet? Four feet? Four feet. <laughs> um, in the staff report, there's an error, and I put four inches of lighting. That would be interesting. <laughs> That's for dogs. <laughs> okay. So this is a site plan um, that shows, okay, so here's the bluff right here. You can see this is the beach. This is the ocean. Their proposal is set back 125 feet from that bluff. Their proposal includes vegetative buffers around each one of the proposed RV sites. The RV sites are in gray, except in this area along this fence. And I made a, a condition or a recommendation the Planning Commission add some vegetative buffers in there, in that area. Becky? Yeah. Question? Sure. 
that building, um, the, the gray. The gray, this gray is building. parking. Is that, is that parking? Yeah, that's parking. Oh, that's guest parking. That's uh, guest parking. Do you this have is any? employee parking. This is an existing building. Is, this that is, is that existing building, is that the one that was the restaurant? This, I think, was the restaurant. Yes, Corky's. Corky's? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I should should took a little bit more time on the site plan. Um, Okay, so the gray, dark gray are the proposed locations for the RVs. Um, let's see, these green brown blobs are areas of proposed vegetation to be planted between where the Airstream trailers would go. Um, let's see, this is an existing septic system on site. And the other existing septic system is right in here. Two. Yeah, there are two. There's two. The uh, green no, and arrows, they're not really arrows, they're lines, these big, thick green lines. These are areas proposed for uh, underground ditches, essentially, to encapsulate the water that otherwise would be going over towards the cliff. So both septics are on the north lot? Both septics are, yeah. Okay. Is that the drain field area too? Is uh, everything tank, drain field area? You'll have to ask the applicant. Gotcha. Not exactly sure. Okay. That's a good question. Okay. Any more questions on that site plan? Here is a, another iteration of the site plan. The red line between them is the separation of the two lots. Those are the two lots. And the recommendation is to to uh, abandon the yeah to do a vacation lot. lot line vacation. And here's a closer up iteration of what we just talked about. Where in this one you can really see where the eleven sites are proposed, and they're all around here. And again, there's just not much vegetation along this fence line, like there is in other locations. Uh, could, Becky, can we go back to yeah. the overview, the satellite picture? I'd like to see proximity of, again of the neighboring structures. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Yep, thank you. What, can, actually, I'll go back. Go back, yes. And where are the, as I recall, some of the concerns my neighbors was noise, um, Mm -hmm. activities that would be occurring on the RV on the, on the project and um, being heard or I'm not sure I'm saying this correctly but yeah the potential um, for noise to carry over to yeah. adjacent lots yeah and and the interesting thing about this proposal and, I'm, and the applicants will probably uh, talk about this this park is proposed as I don't want to say an adult park because it kind of has a negative connotation but it's 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 meant for people to come, couples or single people to come and have a relaxing time and to unwind, so to speak, from you know their city existence. Um, it's not a place to come and party. It's not that kind of, they're not trying to advocate that kind of resort. So, and that's why they want to have this separation between each one of the Airstream units. So these people that come, have serenity and privacy, and it would be a common environment. That's the intention. <clears throat> and these kind of parks, by the way, are located throughout the United States. They are kind of the cutting edge new experience for you know going someplace and unwinding from uh, you know your otherwise professional stresses. Do they have airstreams? Excuse me. Yes. Yes, there are other vintage Airstream parks, and they're very popular. Yeah. That uh, that first one, that red one, is from a park. That very first Airstream that was up there. Okay, so as far as the public involvement, we gave public notification to adjacent property owners within 500 feet. We published notice in three newspapers. <clears throat> we put the staff report, the application, geotechnical report, and comments as we receive them um, on, we posted those on the Planning Commission website. <coughs> Excuse me. 
This is a synopsis of what we've seen from the public comments thus far. Most of the concerns and the issues raised from the public comments uh, deal with the sea cliff and the bluff and the fact that it is eroding at a substantial rate at this point based on the last couple seasons. Um, there's identification that the, the bluffs are fragile. Um, they want to restrict access to the beach from this location. They want to make sure that the Planning Commission restricts any building on the bluff. And there's a suggestion that there be barriers and signage restricting access to the bluff um, associated with this project. And that actually is a recommendation from the geotechnical study in addition. Um, let's see, there's a suggestion that the Planning Commission needs to have a beach tour and see the bluff so they can see firsthand how sensitive this area is and the concerns that are being raised. Uh, there's a request for on-site fencing and screening, um, definitely on that south side, I believe. Becky, I have a question. Sure. Um, is fencing required? No. Okay. No. It's not required, but uh, keep this in mind, and it's in the staff report, that to the extent that the Planning Commission feels that a condition should be applied, you have that discretion to do that, um, assuming that it's not going to be you know, too outrageous, right? But it will be consistent with, uh, Hello, <laughs> with protecting the health and safety of the community and of the neighborhood and really of the county as a whole. Okay, so on-site fencing screening, there's a suggestion uh, that there should not ever be uh, this RV park at Nasika Beach. By the way, there is another very uh, densely populated RV spot right down the road from this. Um, let's see, there's a request to extend the public hearing and there's a request to extend the comment period for people to uh, add comments. Um, there's also a suggestion that the septic feasibility needs to be determined prior to the Planning Commission making a decision. As you saw in the staff report, uh, I left the issue of the feasibility of the septic system up to DEQ. It's in, within their jurisdiction. So I think that's about it. You're probably done listening to me. I have a question. Did sure. you want to summarize? We also received just today some public comments that were slightly in addition to those, the ones from Orca and Sean Malone. Right, right. Were those? Those I, were, I made the last minute update to those, unless you wanted to well, give, they, they asked ask for more time. They asked for us to address the DEQ situation, the feasibility. I thought it was also had to do with the drainage plan or something like that as well. I'm sorry, I. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to add that one to those comments. Okay. I think those are included public comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I had. Okay. Any other questions of me before you? I, I do. Sure. Uh, is anyone else before I? I uh, okay. was going through your staff recommendations, and on um, one of them, number, uh, this is on page 17. Staff recommendation number 11 it says the applicant shall follow and comply with the recommendations set forth in geotechnical site assessment completed by Cascadia Geoservices. Is this all of their suggestions? I think all of their suggestions are probably pertinent to this application. Well, I, I agree. I just yes. wondered. Yes. Uh, yes, it's, it's all of those. Stuff. And I actually. I added a condition that I was going to suggest tonight um, because of the concern with what's happening at the bluff in part, but uh, I would recommend an additional condition and it says conditions of this application shall be reviewed every three years with the planning director to ascertain that the conditions of the permit are being complied with. The concern is that if they're not being complied with, then that bluff can continue to erode fairly rapidly. Uh, this continues, it says, failure to comply with the condition shall be just cause for the planning director to revoke this conditional use permit. So I did uh, suggest that additionally. Okay. It kind of begs another question then. What about the lots adjoining these lots? Do they have the same issues as far as drainage? And, um, they do. They do. So, okay. 
But the issue, well, I can put it back to the site. site one. Okay, so there is significant erosion along this entire block. There's no question about that. So to the extent that this applicant follows the geotechnical um, recommendation, they will be pulling water away from the bluff with this development, which will assist in stopping the rapid rate of erosion on the bluff. The question is, are these people doing similar things? Are these people doing similar things? Well, we don't have the ability to go in and require them to do anything because they don't have a pending application. And it's a good question. Should everybody along the Nisika Beach Bluff go out and be required to redirect stormwater the opposite direction to keep water off the bluff, which seems to be one of the causes of the significant erosion. And I'm not really sure how this all works in time, but if you you if you create something that's going to stick out further because it didn't erode along with all the rest, mm -hmm. would that not be more subjective to more betterment from the seas? I can't answer that's that. Just kind of yeah, that's a geotechnical question. It's a good question. Only question I have. Okay, would the proponent like to speak? Over a month ago, we did a. Um, and your name oh, sorry, I'm Garth or Garth Evie. Yeah. And address, please. Uh, <laughs> Got you for 399 North Laurel Street in Ashland, and then 50% of the time down here in Seca Beach. I'm Jevin Showers. I live at 220 uh, Autumn Ridge Drive in Talent, Oregon. A little over a month ago, we did a presentation to the community, and uh, this is kind of a scaled down version of that uh, lengthy one. I did want to answer, we did, there is two separate systems on the property. Um, we have another proposed area for a newer system. Septic, you're talking about. Septic, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the one closest to the bluff, we're not planning on using that. It's kind of, the DQ gave us approval to use it, but it's, it fights. Um, our intent to preserve the bluff as much as we can. But you've it. put in an application with the DEQ for approval on the south lot then already? DEQ won't do anything until the county gives us an approval gotcha. letter. Gotcha. So we've had multiple conversations with them. Mm -hmm. um, the general feel is they don't see any concern. Um, tourism season begins in April and ends in October. Rainy season begins in October and ends in April. So the main erosion is from the rainy season. Um, it's not projected to be from our tourism season. Um, even in that case, we still want to do some plantings on the bluff and do as much as we can to preserve that via that way. Where am I at here? Um, I think Becky and I have a little bit of the same. There's a place in, on the, there's a few on the west coast. Auto Camp is a, is a great Airstream, Airstream RV park, um, one that we've kind of modeled ourselves after. They really cater to a, a couples or a yoga retreat or an artist retreat venue. Um, we, we have a no dog policy already, so as we, much love, as we love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just really trying to create that peaceful, quiet environment. Um, and it's amazing, like 72% of the tourists that come to the Oregon coast are single or couple tourists. So, but most of the venues, campgrounds or whatnot, cater to families and it's amazing, you know, one, one kid can really change that environment. Or one dog. Or, exactly. or one dog, and uh, we want to bring something else. That's why we really feel um, it's a good fit for the Nasika Beach. So these um, 
I'm sorry, are we letting them present first and then we'll ask questions, or can we ask questions along the way? You can ask questions along okay. the way. Okay. As, as I'm fine with you there. Yeah. That works for you. Okay. So these units, um, are you, 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 the park, or you as owners will own each unit and rent them out short term, long term? Short term. Nightly. Usually it's a two to five day stay. Okay. Okay. So you'll have control over the quality of the structure or of the, the unit. And it's, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're it's provided. not like an RV park no, where no one's pulling in and out. It's everything's right. already set. Okay. I guess you need to introduce yourself too. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're I, to the camera. Yeah. I just sat back down because there's not enough space to reset. You can stand on the other side. If you <laughs> yeah. 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 Team, um, team venture. There you go. Thank you. A lot of the units will have a jacuzzi, a deck. The lighting obviously is greater than the four foot. I think there were some concerns about that in this picture, but not in our um, standards, four foot, really the, the stars at the Secret Beach at night are amazing. Um, that's another thing. Um, and creating a nice ambiance where you can see where you're going, but still see um, what's above. Um, the inside, uh, this is out of the auto camp down in uh, Santa Barbara, and I should know Santa Barbara has one of the most strict or uh, tight approval um, processes for this type of resort, and, and they have auto camp right in Santa Barbara. They, they're totally loving it, not swaying you that way, but mm -hmm. so, uh, this is one of their units, back of the unit. This is a similar one. I really like this one. This one's in a place down in Malibu, and um, they've opened up the whole wall into a sliding, sliding entrance. So, will you be bringing uh, units to the site and refurbishing them on site? Yeah, that's so like construction noise and stuff like that. Um, that picture that sh uh, Becky showed of the site. That parking lot is where we've been doing a lot of the remodel, and it's, um, I hear you saying about noise and concerns. It's just like building a house. Just yeah. like building a house. Um, most of the units we've done right there, the noise is uh, very minimal. A lot of it's contained inside the unit, so we plan on doing this in a two phase. So um, we'll have phase one. It's pretty much close to being ready. We're just waiting for the go ahead with the three units, and then uh, if those are renting, we have to keep it. We have to maintain the noise quality, so we're really controlled on what time we can do that and when. Just a second. I I want to I think uh, I want to change the way we're doing this. What you if you don't mind, we're going to uh, I'd like to just go ahead and do your presentation yep. so you can get through because you're going to answer a lot of questions. Okay. Your presentation okay. right, coming up. Um, yeah, it's really quick then. Once again, this is a unit down in, uh, this is on the Russian River, another auto camp down there. Um, our lighting examples, very warm. Um, once again, our, our dog policy, we really do want to preserve that peaceful environment that's on site. Um, who we're catering to, referencing again, Who's coming to the Oregon, Oregon coast for for the tourism? Um, couples yoga retreats, artist retreats. Um, I think I have the next one. Yeah. So I like Becky's version of this a little bit better. But um, this facility here is large enough to do uh, a yoga retreat or an artist retreat. So the noise contained inside the unit. Um, there will be an on-site manager um, that will really control and monitor everything to make sure it's in compliance with what we're setting as, as a standard. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Did we have anything else? I think the last one we wanted to talk about a little bit. There is a little bit of a employment, economic growth, and TLT. Um, we were projecting 
an annual payroll of about 107,000 into the community. Um, and CLT over transient lodging tax of over or 40,000. Um, and every dollar spent, it's been said, every dollar spent for lodging goes about another dollar, dollar towards the community for, as far as entertainment, um, dining and restaurants and uh, shopping. So there is some a little bit of snowball effect going on there. I think that's a, yeah, that's pretty much it. We had a longer presentation took before. Took a 25 and was told to make it into a three. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Michael. Um, go ahead. I've, I've got a few more, but I'll let somebody else have a question. I do. I have a question. Um, access to the beach. How's that? I read words. You've attempted in the past. When we first bought the property, we, we had a staircase to the beach. And um, there is a, a vegetation line all the way to the beach. So we used that um, first winter, Mother Nature said no. Mm -hmm. So we, we removed that whole staircase from the hillside and uh, have replanted it and um, set up a barrier. And we've kept everybody off that. And it's actually this last winter, as you know, we had an extensive rain and um, the area that we planted didn't move. So we're, we're looking forward to doing a lot more planting down there, data species, and have even presented, put a packet together of um, native, native species that we'd like to bring, bring down there. So are you going to prohibit access from your property to the beach? Or? Right now, yeah. Okay. The access point is about a quarter mile down the road. A quarter okay. mile to okay. the okay. north. That's what so I'm we, just, we direct. Okay. We would direct it more down that way. Do any of your neighboring properties have beach access on the mm -hmm. bluff? Discuss that. I mean, the the front. Uh, if you go to the this one real quick, this will probably have a little bit, as it is the structure that's right on the road. Right here, the entrance is, and that's where most people will pull in. So they they will see a lit up area, but it will not be like you know, big signs or anything like that. Don't out lights or no. It'll actually resemble, I mean, if you drive by it right now, it, it resembles a, a residence. Question? Yes, please. Um, and I know in the um, proposal that there, uh, there's no plans to construct a residence, but, but you are going to have a 20 by 10 foot shower laundry area or facility, is that correct? Structure, there's going to be a 10 foot shower oh. laundry. Right now, um, or it already exists. this is the, the manager's quarters. There's okay. a cottage there. Okay. Um, and then this little building right here is a, set up as a larger facility. Okay, so there's no plans to build additional restrooms? So the, that, that will be included in the, each individual RV? So Correct. There's no external in the, additional need yeah. for restrooms? In the community area, there is a restroom. Okay. There was two. Um, we're looking at bringing it into one, so we can have an ADA access. I have a few questions. Are you uh, regarding this uh, geological survey or study that was done? Are you prepared to do all what he's suggesting, the recommending? Mm -hmm. All the drainage and stuff. Yeah. Do you have any idea what you're going to do on your outfall, or is that yet to be engineered? Your outfall for all the um, I've had conversations with um, Cascadia and they're, and they're in Port Orford, which is, and, uh, that's the geo. And then this morning I had another conversation with CEC out of Medford, they're the civil, and the civil sounds like they'll be handling the drain field. Um, I'm not. Quite sure what their plan is, but I know they, they do have a plan. And it's feasible. And, and 
Is your who is it Doug Gammy or somebody who monitors that bluff? I know they do the, the LIDAR. But who's gonna monitor your bluff to see if there's any less or more perversion? After you do all this fix, you know, that might be an answer for a lot of other people to do that. And that's that's true. Uh, but it'd be nice if the community would but talk a little bit more and come up with a plan. Um, and I know a few of us have. Um, I'm not sure on that answer. Yeah. How long have you owned the lot, those lots? They're going on four and, and four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. The rent cost is going to be per unit, unit or, per, or per night? Yeah. Um, we're looking at probably during the peak season about 250 a night. Um, in the off season, maybe 200. Standard Airstream resorts go anywhere from 175 um, to over 500 a night. Yeah, the one down on the Russian River. Um, I actually tried to book it last summer uh, during the height of the season, and it was six and a quarter for a night to stay in one of those. And it's a little out of control, but people pay it. You know, they want that experience. I, I, I didn't though. It kind of brings up. There's been concerns, will we maintain the fence or will we maintain the property? Um, at those prices, we have incentive to, to really polish it and keep it polished and maintain the bluff as much as we can and preserve what we have. Once this project, we've always said from the beginning too, um, when this project is completed, you know, our goal is to be on the cover of Sunset Magazine in a couple of years. You know, we want to bring that, that uh, presence. presence to the, the bluff area. Yes. Yeah. Imagine yourself uh, a resident of the area. Um, try to put yourself in the shoes of the, of the people who live there. How do you th how do you think you would uh, respond to this project? If I didn't know the project and what our intent is, um, and I see a lot of trailer parks in Curry County, and 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 not knocking those, it's it's not the typical Curry County trailer park that we're proposing. Um, but if I did know what we're intending to do, I think it's a good fit. I, I think a lot of concerns, when we did do the presentation, the people that showed up for the presentation, I, I think a good majority of them that had concerns or had questions left um, satisfied that what we we're proposing well, well, I believe most people in the beginning thought that we were actually proposing putting in a pull your trailer in trailer park and stay for months at a time when we're actually trying to do like a high end Airbnb type thing. And, so, it, and so. it was proposed, I think the way it was written, it, it was proposed that we had 18 units. Um, I think there is a high density, I think I know you can do it, but we're definitely not we're low impact, um, more ambiance than. We want to we want to keep the park like setting and have a nice space for people to come where they don't feel like they're crammed into each other, especially since we're going for the couples. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, that, no, that answers that question. And the other one is, um, I think, as I recall, you said in your earlier comments, it's a two or three night stay is kind of the norm, yeah. two to four or something like that. Is that going to create a lot of traffic and in and out um, that will have an impact on the neighborhood? I don't, you know, right now you can sit on the Seca Beach <coughs> and see a car for 20 minutes, yet pretty much every other house is an Airbnb rental. Yeah, there's a lot of vacation <coughs> rentals down there. So you see a little bit of traffic. Um, I think that if you think about it, at maximum, we would have 22 guests on the property at one time. And that, I think I did the math, it's like 7.3 people per <coughs> acre. So on three acres, that, that definitely makes it pretty roomy. Okay. Um, I just have one more question. Yes. If I could. And this is outside of my area of expertise. Um, but as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, with, with what's being required from the geotechnical, or the geo report, the um, measures that would be put in place would actually provide more stability for the cliff side, the bluff side, then if nothing happened. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That According correct. to the GO report. Yes. Is staff comfortable with that? 
that would be the recommendation and the discussion from the geotechnical engineer and I wouldn't be in a position to say anything different than that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, can we discuss the conditions that are identified? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just have some questions. Sure. Um, number nine, the development shall have the applicant propose low-impact lighting for the parking area, drive aisles, and pedestrian paths. Mm -hmm. um, should the individual RV sites and buildings be included in that? So we could add individual RV sites because the one example you showed of the um, RV site had a, had the, the lights stream lights over. Yeah, yeah. 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 and we're, we're not going to do that. I did try to comment on that. That's not our everything about that, except for we like the deck and everything. I think we'll do a better quality, but um, those string lights. You do plan to have lighting at the RV sites themselves. So yeah, but it's all impact. it's all low impact and down low. Mostly for safety, so when people walk in, I they can actually see what's going on, see what they're around. Um, on page 10 of the staff report, the bottom paragraph says the proposed site plan shows three different infiltration ditches to be constructed. Uh, however, it does not indicate where the interceptor drain is to be constructed. It is recommended that the applicant work closely with the geoengineer to identify the location of the interceptor drain and then also indicate if there will be a discharge of storm water from the interceptor drain and where will that discharge occur. You've got to be thinking about that. For sure. And that, I was just on that phone this morning and letting them know, queuing them up to get, to get ready to, to finish that at the end of the... So where do you, what's your concept on that? Where do you... Where's all your storm water going to go? Yeah, obviously I'm not a, an engineer, um, but I mean, the, there is a proposed curtain drain, I believe, right in here. It's not on this map. Um, the standard for, and I'm not even sure if I can answer on this because I'm not, I'm not, it's not my qualification, but um, the standard for state and county and city is they, they, they're running those to the bleach. To the beach um, and with the diffuser at the base. I'm not sure if that's the, the plan, but I mean, that's, that's state, county, and city. That's, what the, that's what's happening now. Hopefully, there's something better than that. These are swales basically right here that'll catch any kind of sediment, these blue lines. So, there's any sediment off the parking lot, it'll be caught there, there, and anything from this hill will be caught right there any kind of like dirt, sediment, or whatnot that might cloudy the water. Are you talking about to the beach to surpass the hub? Yeah. Um, there's been conversation about well, that. Well, that's what, that's, yeah. if, if I'm hearing you correctly, maybe it's some conduit that goes out there and dumps out, or, or, or I mean, I don't know. I think what, like what, it's, you have to be engineered. It, what it, it, well, it does have to be engineered, but yeah. I just... I wasn't sure if you'd had that discussion with the engineers. We yeah, have, have that concept any. developed. Yeah. Okay. Because I can see neighbors being upset if you're diverting water to either side of the property. Right. Right now, that. Do you have a standing water? I mean, you've been there four years. No. No, no, no standing water. Right now, in the rainy season, about 79 inches a year. We're getting four million gallons of water on those three acres, um, and it dissolves quickly, and um, there isn't any, any issues. Um, I, I, I entrust him to uh, CEC Engineering in Medford and Eric Overdeck in Port Over. They've worked together closely, and I feel that they can solve the issue. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. And, uh, is there any other proponents who would like to speak in favor? Love that bag. Thank you. <laughs> got it for my birthday. Oh, yeah. I, I got a similar one for my birthday. Yeah. Carl? What? You can go first. I'll okay. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Are you a proponent? I'm a proponent. Your name and address? With them. My, my name is Ronald Meekum. And 
I live at uh, 94470 B Street. I have the corner of Nasika Road and B Street. That's my property. And Garth's project is just down the road, maybe a quarter mile, half a mile from me. And so being on the corner of Nasika Road, there was a question about traffic out there. The only time we have traffic is when the people that live there go to work and come home. And just a couple of people will go down looking for the beach since it's Nasika Beach. And uh, <clears throat> there's no access along that rough bluff that I know. I've walked it both ways. There's been people put up stairs to go down. And as soon as they're found out, they get torn down because nobody wants stairs going down that bluff. Uh, so people neighbors come by and just tear up the stairs down themselves <laughs> no property owners they buy in yeah. there yeah and they because you're up on that bluff then yeah. everybody wants their own access to the beach and so it's just too dangerous to put a mother nature is tearing them down right gotcha. well not just that but there are people who um, there's a vigil try and protect yeah. the bluff <laughs> and uh, they 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 watch it keep track of it the neighborhood does but uh, I know the sites where they're building on I've been down there personally and looked at it and it's going to be a beautiful place it really is and I <coughs> definitely agree with what they're trying to do uh, we could definitely use that kind of um, construction in our area because we are kind of out there and the neighborhood has been depleting and now it's starting to build up. We have new neighbors coming in, putting in new shops for themselves and people like uh, Yard coming in and there's, like like they've said, there's B&Bs, Airbnbs on my little horseshoe there. Uh, there's two B&Bs right there on my, on my street, basically. So it isn't going to be an impact as far as any of me, myself, and any of my neighbors have come up with. So. I'd really like to see the project go through. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call. If I may, um, I can introduce yourself. Carl King, I live at, on the Sticker Road at 33085. I'm between this project and a legal beach access at the end of the Sika Road. The Sika Road was the coastal highway. It was mm -hmm. 101 at times. Yeah. And so when you go north on 101 now and get to the blinking light and take that left, it goes down a, over a mile or so and then it curves back out. But the old road keeps going to a dead end. And on that dead end is a state allowed access to the beach. It's part of the Parks Department land. That stub is owned by ODOT. And ODOT, for example, a year or two ago came in and repaved it for us because it was getting kind of beat up down where people go and park to go fishing or panning for gold or to have access to the beach. There is no legal access from these high bluffs. No. The year Garth put his stairs there, the next door neighbor put stairs, and someone further south put stairs. All three property owners received letters from Carolyn Johnson and the state agency in charge of protecting those bluffs. Now, before the person at the very far south end of it actually was the only one who immediately took down half of his staircase. Before he could go back in September, when he said he'd take down the rest of it, Mother Nature took it. There is currently a half of a staircase on the property immediately to the south with a rope on it. That property, I believe, is on the market. And whether they're telling people they have the right to walk down half the stairs to this decking and then be held down with the rope, I don't know. I walked that beach back when that, those letters went out and happened to run into two rangers from the state who were out looking at those things. Uh, 
they we went by the property again immediately, immediately to the north there's a, a large hot built residential building that has never been used in four years I've been there that was built to be an Airbnb or a, a bed and breakfast and the owner had while I was watching extended tubing down to discharge his drainage onto the beach the rangers said look that's really not allowed but it's better than having what was there before which was piping that comes halfway down and discharges the water so that it erodes the bottom half uh, i am not opposed and i don't think you know we had 10 of our property owners who appealed the the staff approval of this and again as gar said we were told there were going to be 18 units there there are 11. The concept is great. Our comments from day one have been screen it and stay off the block. One of the recommendations in the geotech report is that there be a barrier and signs prohibiting anyone from getting within 25 feet feet of the bluff, the slope of the sea cliff. There is nothing in the geotech report that supports putting any additional vegetation on that bluff. Goal 17 of the state goals specifically says it's to conserve and protect the resources and benefits of all coastal shorelines. There is something about walking a bluff that's left in the way nature created it and walking and looking at a bluff that man has modified in an attempt to retain and stop nature from doing what nature is going to do. I always you know, draw the analogy, it's the difference between going to Williamsburg in Virginia and going to Disneyland. Williamsburg renovated and preserved the antique buildings. In Disneyland and Disney World, they build lookalikes that are different. But again, you know, I have as I, my last comment that I submitted, I, I asked, I sent you 20 photographs of that beach erosion. The geotech report talks about the only evidence you have before you is that there's beach erosion and there's no evidence to support allowing this applicant to plant anything on that bluff. I suspect that the environmentalists who, as they always do, late, send a late comment to you, I suspect that they're going, they're, and I've talked to them, one of their main concerns is whether or not this planning commission applies the standards of the goals. And one of their concerns is whether the approval that you give protects that bluff from being altered. I would suggest to you and I would have suggested to Garth that add the condition that includes the 25 foot pro prohibition the fact that you have three conditions addressing the geotech report one saying you'll comply with everything in it and then the next two specifically mention two of the recommendations I think that leaves it open to interpretation that the others don't apply and so I, I would ask you to add that 25 foot prohibition with an understanding that there'll be no disturbance at this time if they want to come back on a separate approval with the evidence that can demonstrate to you that it is appropriate and to do plantings on that bluff under state law and under the goals that's that's a different thing I don't want to hold, I wouldn't ask you to hold them up on that. Carl, can you wrap it up, please? Yeah, and, and the other, you know, the fencing, you know, just simply, you know, the fencing's there, we all appreciate it. We've asked them simply to put in a condition saying you're going to keep the fencing. There is a condition. 
not for the fencing. I believe the barriers are fencing. But not on the perimeter. And that's that's what the next door neighbors are concerned about. Can, They're can concerned you about up, please. But again, I, I I think they've done a great job with what they're doing, with the minor tweaks, I think every I can't speak for the entire neighborhood, but I don't think anyone in the neighborhood would appeal this. And I think you owe it to them to give them a, a decision that the environmentalists will accept. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other proponents? Proponents? <laughs> I'm Dennis Boris. I'm a consulting engineer with PD in California. I own the uh, what was known as the Inn at Nasika Beach, Victorian three-story bed and breakfast. We're not running it that way at this time. I live there with my wife and two young children, and we enjoy it uh, whenever we fly in from other places. Um, and um, I'm sorry to say that early in this process, I opposed Garth's project. And part of it was because uh, I think it was accidentally misrepresented as having uh, far too many <coughs> facilities there on that three acres, and it's now down to 11. Uh, that made a difference. The biggest difference was getting acquainted with Garth. As an engineer who has a pretty good idea and also a corporate CEO on how to read people and what they're going to do, and also look at some of his former projects, I've been highly impressed. And um, I have no doubt that Garth is going to make this a, a, a great uh, uh, a, a great project. I also want to speak to my knowledge of the bluff erosion. I've spent about $30,000 uh, working jointly with a, a geotechnical firm up around Portland. I can tell you that the, the B&B was constructed 105 feet from a bluff. I can now go along with a laser distance ranger at night and measure up to the porch. And it now sits since 1992 uh, we're approaching, uh, what, 26 or 7 years. Uh, we're sitting at uh, somewhere between 40 and 70 feet to the edge of the bluff. And um, there were some uh, proposals made for uh, dealing with the issues. Uh, I think one of the reasons the bluff has done quite well over this period of time is they did some uh, very intuitively correct things, including uh, collecting stormwater, just like you would on any property in the United States, and running it down to a public collection point. In this, in this particular case, it ends up being the toe of the bluff. So there's uh, two lines that run down. I think uh, Carl referenced, I was out there for about two hours last fall doing some repairs on those lines. They hadn't been repaired since I bought the property. And one of them carries all the uh, stormwater from uh, the uh, roof of the house. Again, much like would happen anywhere else in the United States where stormwater is rooted into the gutters and eventually Gold Beach and other places uh, out to sea. And um, likewise with uh, runoff in a patio area that goes down a separate conduit uh, to the toe of the bluff. And you know, I know there's been a lot of concern about bluff preservation, and I've talked with uh, Garth and others that own bluff properties, and everyone that lives there knows that it's in their best interest to minimize the rate of erosion. The rate of erosion on my particular bluff is run between one and two feet per year. Uh, recently, uh, in the last probably month or so, I spent a day with uh, Bob Bush, a geologist from um, Brookings, and uh, got to know him very well in the way he thinks, and he got to know me, and we spent a lot of time talking about uh, these issues. The best ways to preserve the bluff, he actually did recommend planting on the bluff, and uh, recommended ways of holding the plantings in place, and uh, uh, stairways to the beach can be constructed if they're done properly. In my conversations with the state before I bought the property, uh, their concern was whatever you put on the bluff, you need to keep your side of the vegetation line. If it ends up in the public uh, area, then you can be liable. So uh, there are ways of constructing things that look well. I'm also an artist, 
and uh, I know how to make things uh, look right, and I think Garth does too. And um, so I, I think that there are ways of minimizing erosion to the bluff. You don't want to have traffic, foot traffic up and down the bluff. And it's not as steep as it might appear. I actually did a profile with an instrument that I invented and developed, and it's actually in use, I noticed, by Cascadia, uh, the Zip Level Pro 2000. And I did a profile of the bluff after I bought the property. And the bluff profile is about 40 degrees with a horizontal. And uh, not that steep. Uh, about what you would expect from an ordinary stair staircase. So anyway, I think I've been impressed that the neighborhood, I don't know if anybody, uh, and maybe I don't know enough people yet, but I don't know of anybody yet that lives along the bluff that's uh, been willfully abusive of it. And everyone knows that it's in their best interest to preserve the bluff by plantings. And if they are going to put a stairway down there that they want to have survive the forces of nature, there are ways of doing that. Um, I don't think most people have endeavored to do that correctly yet. Um, but um, anyway, that's my take on Garth and his project. And I'm very confident that this is going to be a, a great project. Thank you very much. <coughs> is there any other proponents? Any other uh, opponents? Anybody who's opposed? I need to follow up. Um, damn it. Okay. Um, that's rebuttal. I just wanted to um, address the um, when we did do the staircase almost four years ago. I had talked, I think his name is Callum with the state and state postal director, and he was highly advocated planting and um, our staircase, when we left it where it was, it was actually in approval. Um, it was an approved staircase because we went to the end of our vegetation line and stopped there. And so um, I just wanted to clear, I seem like that was a little misrepresented, represented. I just wanted to clear that up. It was. It was, um, we did work hand in hand with the state on that staircase and uh, we removed it just because um, there was some rain on here and told us to. And, uh, okay, thank I you. I think that was the only thing I wanted to follow up on, yeah. Yeah, and as County Legal Counsel, I do not have an opinion, I haven't been asked to give an opinion on your, Mr. King saying that there's no lawful access to the beach from the private properties and I don't, I haven't been asked to give an opinion on that. If I'm understanding um, this application, does it propose, it doesn't propose beach access, so that seems like a real moot point here. Yeah. But, and also, if I'm also understanding that the recommendations from the geotech was a, a signage and maybe some kind of a barrier 25 feet from the bluff, and you're saying that's acceptable as well. So I think, I think it's, we're ta talking about something that probably is resolved. I believe so. Okay, have one in place. All right. Okay. Is there any more discussion on this? I had a question. I think one of the recommendations was to have the um, the barriers <coughs> and signing 25 feet back from the bluff. Or yes. where is that? Where's the right now? Barriers. Um, as Dennis said, it's about 45. Mm -hmm. And. There's one area where we did have some erosion this winter, and we're probably about 15 feet back from that edge. But over on the on the other ends, we're maybe five, six feet, and you can literally walk down the bluff. It's not like someone's going to fall off the bluff to their demise. It's, um, but we do have a setback about five, eight feet. And what's the barrier going to be? Is it a fence? Um, we have, we've been renting the cottage there the last two years, and we, when people sign in, they acknowledge that, you know, just don't, go, don't cross over the road. We have a road boundary. Uh -huh. And um, it's hard to put up a fence because a fence can actually cause more erosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just basically have a very simple rope. And, uh, Are there signs out there warning people? Not right now, um, but it is a sign-in feature when they, when they sign in. 
the property and they know or not to go over. We do leave the grass on that side uh, high. And, uh, okay. It's pretty obvious yeah, if you walk right. up to the edge because everything's groomed and then there's a rope and then there's weeds. So, grass. Grass, sorry. <laughs> Doors. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Is it all of your power going to be on the ground to each? Powder, water, um, one, we're proposing uh, the propane tanks will be one tank, so that it'll be an easy fill for the kind of, for suburban, whoever does it, to come in to fill one tank bi monthly or whatnot. One more question. Um, I think one of the public comments we had was requesting that you leave your existing fencing that you have in place. Is that a plan or? We just put it up. <coughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We replaced the old rusty chain link fence. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Then I'll close the hearing and for us to deliberate. If I could, Mr. Chair, there has been a request to continue the hearing and so the, board, the commission at that point, uh, you can do some deliberations, but you actually have to leave the, either continue the hearing or leave the record open for a period of 14 days. So um, there's still an opportunity for people to submit information into the, into the record. So I think for tonight, um, you may discuss this amongst yourselves, um, of course, but I think the ultimate outcome tonight will be a continuation and it's just going to be the question of whether you leave the hearing open or just close the hearing and leave the record open. Okay. Uh, thank you. Is there anybody want to say anything to talk about that would like to speak about? Questions? I, I'd like to make a comment um, regarding the planting uh, in order for erosion control. And I'm for it, and I'll simply say this, is because I think that man can help Mother Nature uh, and work in conjunction with Mother Nature to create a better product. And I'll use the analogy of a, um, a jetty. Because uh, if you go up to the Columbia River, that north jetty, until that was formed, it was just a big wetland with no beach. You create the jetty, and then Mother Nature comes in and creates actually a beach people can enjoy and a safe entrance in and out of the river. And I think that that type of mentality also applies to this, is that uh, planting vegetation on that bluff is a great idea, I think. Uh, and if, uh, from what I know, um, and I'm very, uneducated in it, but from what I've read and what I've studied is that vegetation helps hold bluffs together. And I don't see why anybody that has the preservation of the bluff in mind uh, wouldn't be a proponent of that. So long as it's a native type species vegetation. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Okay, then we're going to, uh, since there's a re uh, request for a continuous, we'll leave this this hearing open is AD 1911 until for 14 days for added comments. Well, I mean, no, you have um, well, we, we got two yeah. choices. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I motion we close the file but leave it open for public comment. Close, close, the, the, close, the, close the hearing, the hearing but like leave it open for public for comment. Public comment for 14, yep. 14 days. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. Good second then? I second. Okay, all in favor. Our roll call, please. Okay, Chair Freeman? Yes. Vice Chair St. Marie? Yes. Uh, Commissioner DeWald? Yes. Commissioner Jensen? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next item is uh, planning director updates. Okay, the only uh, quick update that I have is there's been a request to uh, move the Planning Commission meeting in, in October from October 17th to October 24th. 
And the purpose of moving that is uh, St. Pacifica has made that request. They anticipate having their final plaque prepared and ready for submittal uh, the 1st of October. Um, I expressed that staff would, and the engineering folks and the road department would need more time to review it and couldn't get it to the Planning Commission by the 17th. And so they requested to see if the Planning Commission would be amenable to moving their meeting till the 24th. 24th is just the next week, the next Thursday, after the 17th. <clears throat> and I expressed concern to the request stating that uh, members of the Planning Commission have been really honorable in showing up for that third Thursday in the month and many of them have other plans around that which is awesome so I'm just going to put that out there is this something we should decide, we probably should decide or you can ask later it would be good if you can decide or you can email me and let me know if we don't have a quorum then uh, it's not going to work I, I'm, I'm good I have to personally but you know I I have plans, but I'm not sure exactly what. Okay. I'll email you. I'll email you. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? That's all I have. And then, <coughs> is there a, I move to adjourn. I do know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> second. Second, move to second. Hey, wait, it's still I? pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can read all the comments again. <laughs> Thank you very much.